So the Trump circus rolls on and on. But what's he thinking? Emma Doyle was a part of the former president's inner circle. She was his deputy chief of staff. And Emma joins me now from Washington, D.C. Nice to see you, Emma. We know he's a fighter and we also know he hates to lose. And he could lose big time here and go to jail. You know him. What's going through his head? I don't think he's considering that possibility until he knows he's exhausted every possible avenue both in court and in the court of public opinion. He's gonna fight this um, on online, on TV. And I don't know if he cares if he's losing potential jurors, if he thinks he's winning potential voters. Mm. We've seen his bravado, we know his bravado, but behind closed doors, do you think there is a part of him that is scared? He is human. I don't know if he's scared because I just don't think it's really sunk in yet. I think there he knows how many stages there are in a fight and this in particular is not the strongest case that, that's looming for him. You know, there were two other investigations into classified documents and potential election interference in Georgia. I think those are, you know, from, from what we've seen here in the US, those seem to be more serious and well-defined and precedented charges. How can there not be a part of him that is afraid he's potentially going to jail? Honestly, I think a part of it is he's, he's faced a lot of challenges in his life. He's had businesses go under, he's had scandals, he's gone through things that would take out any normal human or politician, and none of it seems to matter for him. There haven't been consequences. His speech today, it started in true Trump style. There was songs, there was cheering, but then he rambled. He was rehashing old grudges. Was that a lost opportunity? You know, I think at this point, if you're either tuning in to watch an entire Trump speech or you're going to a Trump speech in person, you know what you're going to get. Um, you're going to get that list of grievances uh, with a few variations, but I've been to a lot of those rallies. They, they don't change that much. Um, I did think the, the energy level was lacking. Um, and that's something that usually indicates he's trying to stay on script and doesn't like it. But I think he's trying to be cautious, but chafing at that restraint. Um, and that over time, what that means is he'll, he'll stop taking some of that advice. I know it doesn't look like he's taking anyone's advice when he's going through that list of grievances, but for Trump, that's as restrained as it gets. Is he using these charges to get uh, support for his campaign, to provoke his followers and to raise money? He's definitely raising money and building support for the campaign. His campaign has put out statements that they've they've claimed to raise over about eight million dollars so far and counting um, four million dollars of which they said came in the first 24 hours after the um, announcement of the indictment. But what I think is really interesting about that is that the campaign is claiming that 25 percent of those donations came from first time Trump donors. So what that means is there are people out there in the United States who have watched Donald Trump as a presidential candidate and a president from 2015 through 2023, and they've never felt compelled to open their wallet before and give him cash. And this week they decided to do that. We heard from his lawyers today, they say there is no case, but I mean, that's not entirely true, is it? In relation to the hush money payments, there is a paper trail. You've got emails, text messages, evidence that he falsified business records, and there are those personal checks signed by Trump. It sounds damning. I think it's serious anytime you're talking about um, the, something that could shape the outcome of a presidential election. But I don't think this changes anyone's opinion of Donald Trump. You're basically saying there's nothing that Trump can do that will shock us. Yes, <laughs> I, think <that's, laughs> I think that's true. Do you like him? Do you like Donald Trump? It's a tough question. He can be a very likable person in a way that I think uh, not a lot of people see in public. He can be very charming and he can be um, he can be funny, um, but I, it's, a, it's a complicated question. I'll say that. Complicated in, in what way? To some extent, when you're in that job, you separate the person in the job from the role of the president and think that's necessary to do the job. You, you don't have a lot of time to stop and think, do I like my boss? Because this is just, this is what's necessary on a daily basis to, to be able to get the job done. There's a lot of things happening. Do you respect him? I think that's that's challenging. It's uh, there are a lot of things he's done, especially in the 2020 election cycle, that uh, I think have, have cost him a lot of people's respect, including mine. Would you like to see him bow out of the presidential race? I would. I think that it would be uh, it'd be great to be able to see a candidate come forward who could 
decisively win a general election on behalf of the Republican Party um, and to be able to serve two full terms. You don't think Donald Trump is the person to bring the Republican Party together and would have enough support to win an election? He has not locked up the support of the entire Republican Party right now, not necessarily because of the indictment, just because of a lot of other things he has said and done over the years. And then there's his role in the January 6 riots where five people died. Yes, I think that's a that's a much more serious case. It relates to his conduct as president, as a presidential candidate. And I think that's that's a very, very high bar that he needs to demonstrate he could clear in order to be qualified to hold the office again. His wife Melania was not by his side for his speech and neither was his daughter Ivanka. How much should we read into that? I don't think she likes the headlines and I, I, I would not expect her to be uh, enjoying the, the repeated media coverage and scrutiny of this. I think it's, um, it's got to be something that's, that's painful for her to see. Um, but I wouldn't read much into her not showing up for the speech in terms of her support for him and, and the re-election campaign. It's, it's hurtful and it's embarrassing. Um, you worked for Melania after you left Trump. Do you think she's okay right now? And do you think she'll stay with him? I think they have a very um, unusual marriage in a lot of ways, but I think it's stronger in many ways than people realize. I do, I've seen him call her for advice and take her advice um, in ways that he doesn't always acknowledge publicly. Um, but I, I, so I do, think that she'll stay with him. What emotions do you feel for Donald Trump right at the moment? You know, it's I it's hard not to feel for the team. I was a part of it. Um, I think it's a tough day for them. And certainly uh, I know the feeling of constantly being in a fight when you're there. You know, I, I was there for the first impeachment and the constant sort of noise from outside about um, about unrelated things to what we are working on on a daily basis. And I know how challenging and draining that can be when you're, when you're working for someone. On the other hand, I, I think it's hard not to say, look, he's, he's a person who's made a lot of decisions and choices over the years, and some of those have brought him here. So at the end of the day, he's the only one who, who can answer for that. Do you feel sorry for him? To some extent. I think it's, it's hard not to work for somebody and, uh, and, and feel for them when you know they're having a bad day at work, which... This certainly counts as a bad day at work. Um, Emma, here's the thing that blows my mind. At the end of the day, we could have a person running for the White House from inside jail. And you know what? If we were talking about anyone other than Donald Trump, you'd write them off, but you can never write off this man, can you? He just keeps coming back and seemingly stronger every time. So, no, you, you really can't write him off. Even when down, he's not out. Really appreciate talking to you, Emma. And one thing we can say with great certainty, it ain't dull, is it? <laughs> not a bit. Thanks. Thank you.